Unfortunately, our C10 has been running too good. Our carburetor is starting to give us some issues and honestly, it probably needs a rebuild, but I figured let's kill two birds with one stone and show you guys how to replace a carburetor. And while we're there, might as well go ahead and upgrade it too. So like I said, the carburetor that's on our truck now is giving us some issues. One of the jets inside the carburetor is leaking. So what's happening is the truck is getting way too much fuel, which is causing it to run rich, which in return is causing it to run very poorly. We can't have that. So I went ahead and picked up an Edelbrock Performance Series carburetor. Now this carburetor is a 600 CFM with an electronic choke, and this should definitely solve all of our issues that our truck is currently having. Now, one of the cool things about this carburetor is the fact that you can pull it right out of the box and install it onto your truck or car with no real modifications needed. Now, if you do have a Quadrajet or a Thermoquad intake manifold, you will have to purchase the Edelbrock adapter to be able to install it onto your vehicle. If you don't have that adapter and you go just to install this carburetor on, you're gonna run into some issues. Besides that adapter you may need, depending on what intake manifold you have, the carburetor is basically going to come with almost everything else that you need to be able to install onto your vehicle. Now, the only thing you're realistically going to need is some rubber fuel line. If you still have a factory carburetor on your Chevy 350, then more than likely you still have the metal factory fuel line going up to the carburetor. You will have to cut that metal fuel line and then attach the rubber fuel line onto the metal. That way you can actually connect it to the carburetor. But other than that, this install is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. So let's go ahead and throw this on the truck. Since we're dealing with an electronic choke here, I like to go ahead and just disconnect the battery. That way it prevents anything from happening. Now we're just gonna go ahead and start removing everything here. So I'm gonna pull off the throttle cable. Then I'm gonna pull off the spring here. Now that both of those are out of the way, I'm just gonna remove the two bolts that hold down the carburetor on the side of the engine. Now before I remove the two nuts that are on this side of the carburetor, I'm just gonna disconnect the power cable going to our electronic choke. Now we'll disconnect the fuel line. After that step's completed, remove the vacuum line and the PCV line off the carburetor, and then you're good to go ahead and remove the carburetor from the engine. It's now time to put the new Edelbrock carburetor on, but before doing so, I just wanna point out a couple of things. As you can see, I have a fitting in the backside of our carburetor here, and that is going to be for our brake booster hose. Now you can end up putting it on the front here going to this fitting, but I found it to just be a lot cleaner going on the back side of the carburetor. Also, you'll notice that I have two vacuum caps here that's included in the kit. Go ahead and put those on before installing it. And then after that, you're gonna to wanna to grab the gasket that also comes in the kit that's gonna go on the intake manifold so your carburetor doesn't end up having an air leak after bolting it down. Like I said, we're gonna put our brand new gasket on first. Then we can put our carburetor on. Now we're gonna put our four nuts back on and tighten down the carburetor. All right, now we're just gonna start hooking everything back up. So I got my throttle cable here. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. And next we're gonna put our spring on. Now I am eventually going to end up getting a smaller spring just so it looks a little bit nicer in the engine bay. So that's temporary for right now. And then we have our PCV hose is just simply gonna to connect to the front of the carburetor. Which we can definitely shorten up here in a little bit. And when I was showing you the carburetor outside the car, I said to go ahead and put those two vacuum ports on. I did forget that I actually have to use one of those vacuum ports. So I took that cap off, 
And we're just gonna go ahead and connect that like so. And we can also take our brake booster line and connect it to the back, or if you opt it to go in the front, wherever you put that fitting. Like I said, with it going to the back, it just looks a lot cleaner in my opinion. So like I said in the beginning of the video, you'll have to cut the factory metal fuel line, slip a rubber fuel line over it, and then be able to connect that to the carb. Ours already had an aftermarket carb on that, so that was previously done, but the fuel line does not reach over to our new carb. So inside the kit, they will give you a brand new fuel filter. I also have some new fuel line on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect our old one and then connect the new one up. I went ahead and cut that fuel line down a little bit so we didn't have so much excess. Slide our hose clamp on, fuel hose over, and tighten down. With all the lines now hooked up, I'm going to put power to our electronic choke. Now we already had a carburetor in here with an electronic choke, so that's already wired up. We got our positive on there, and now we'll do our ground. We're going to slip in our ground here. And then we will ground it on the carburetor itself. Probably just use that bolt right there. When installing one of these Edelbrock carburetors for the first time, you're actually gonna to wanna to take both of these adjustment screws, turn them all the way to the right, so clockwise, and then you're gonna to wanna to back them off two full turns counterclockwise. Now that we have our adjustment screws in the correct position, we realistically only have one more step and that's throwing on the air cleaner gasket. But one thing I do wanna mention about those adjustment screws, you only wanna do this if you're actually starting the car on this Edelbrock carburetor for the first time. And then afterwards, you're gonna to wanna to tune it correctly so that way the truck will run as best as it can. And like I said, one of the last things to do is to end up putting your air cleaner gasket on. And then after that, you'll put the air cleaner rod in and then the air cleaner on and start the vehicle. With everything tightened down and all of our lines hooked up, we can go ahead and start the truck. So we're all wrapped up with installing this new Edelbrock Performance Series carburetor. And I gotta say, super easy install. You could probably knock this out in 40 minutes maybe. That's probably overestimating it to be completely honest. Now, I will say there will be some fine tuning that you have to do towards the end. Now, almost every engine is gonna be different depending on what modifications you have to it. So I'm not gonna get too into depth on tuning this carburetor in this video. But basically, after you get the truck running, you just have to adjust those screws until the truck is running as it should. Now, I would highly advise to look this up if you've never done it before. And if you guys do wanna see a video on tuning your carburetor in the future, then just let us know down in the comment section below. It is time to drop a gear and disappear. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you need any classic truck parts, just click our link down below in the description.